I hope you are doing well today. I am mid-process in a meal that I want to show you today. This one comes from the Flavor Cookbook. So Forks and Knives Flavor. It's called Soba Noodles with Shiitake Mushrooms and Eggplant. And it's kind of a very vegetable-y noodle salad. So where I am in this process right now, I've gone ahead and cooked up my buckwheat noodles and drained them under cold water to stop the cooking. And I have sauteed my onion, garlic, and ginger in a nice big pot because this is going to contain everything. So I can kind of give you a sense of that right there. So where we're at now is to take all of this. So I have zucchini, which is not in the recipe, but I'm doubling it. And I didn't want to double my eggplant. So I've got eggplant down in there. And then, oops, way underneath, little strips of roasted pepper, which were actually canned. So those are going to go right in the whole batch. And then in this here, I've got my soy sauce, my mirin, lemon juice. So those are going to go in as well. And this is going to cook until the eggplant and zucchini soften. So I'm just going to move that around. Oh, and I need my mushrooms. So I've got a whole bunch of mushrooms here. Those go right in. So this is a super vegetable-based noodle salad. And I just want to talk a little bit about this sauce. Uh, first of all, that base of onion, garlic, ginger, very typical. And I should also tell you, I was fresh out of fresh ginger. So instead of one tablespoon of fresh ginger, I used a teaspoon of dry ginger per tablespoon. Um, I don't think we've talked about this so far, but that can also be done with garlic. If you don't have the time for peeling your garlic, you could use, for every clove of garlic, is that right? A teaspoon or a half teaspoon. Um, you can look that up. But there is the substitute dried to fresh, just like it would be with basil or oregano or thyme or any of those things. We all just know the fresh is a little bit more potent. It tastes a little bit differently. So this is all moved around, which is great. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit. Mirin is sort of a sweet sauce that is used in a lot of Asian dishes. Uh, rice vinegar and sugar, I think, sometimes are substituted if people can't find it. But if you have an Asian grocery store nor near you or even an Asian aisle, you can often find it. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but so I have a gluten allergy. I can't use regular soy sauce. Sometimes recipes like this one call for tamari. Uh, and then liquid aminos or coconut aminos are another option. They're all basically the same thing. So probably slightly different flavor profiles, but if you are gluten-free, you want to go for either the coconut aminos or liquid aminos, like I have here, or the tamari. And so let me just allow you to get in and see a little bit of that. So these strips of pepper, right, and the same, they're kind of calling for a matchstick blend on your eggplant. And the, the cook is probably uh, seven minutes, three to five minutes. I should look it up. We should look it up, I'll tell you that. So let me just read it for us all. Once we've got that going, five to seven minutes until the eggplant is tender and we get to cover it. So where did I put that cover? It's over here. I am using a Dutch oven, which is kind of a thick pot. Uh, but you could use a regular saucepan or a saute skillet, which is actually what they recommend. But I'm making such a big batch. Because what's going to come after this is uh, spinach and the noodles are going to get in. Also in that sauce, I should mention, it calls for something called yuzu juice or lemon juice. And in her little description above, you could also substitute some lemon peel with some brown rice vinegar. So a lot of these kind of ethnic dishes that call for things like you can garnish this one with togarashi or red pepper flakes or none of those things if you're serving children so if you have the ability to get to an asian grocery store and find yuzu juice or togarashi go ahead and do it if you can't find them or you just don't have the time use the red pepper flakes use the lemon juice uh, mirin uh, like yesterday when i did the kale fried rice i said you know what's really good in this rice 
is a little rice vinegar and mirin. I, I did exactly that after the fact because it would be good. So while that's kind of cooking, I'll just kind of walk you through these buckwheat noodles. So, you know, you get to see all the trash, which is great. So buckwheat noodles, they're really starchy. You only have to mess it up one time to realize what you've done. So I went ahead, because they're so starchy, a really good rinse is helpful. Go through and keep them from sticking too horribly. See how easily they stick together? So you want to go through and get them as separated as is humanly possible and then keep them that way. So if I wasn't using them soon, I would probably leave them in a cold water bath, just enough to cover them. But they're kind of fun, especially if you're gluten-free. They add a little bit of color. They taste great. They're very light. So a really great addition if you have the ability. So I just wanted to show you those a little bit before we move on. Um, you'll also find you can buy your spinach uh, fresh or in a clamshell like this one. It's really whatever works best for you, whatever feels most convenient. Um, and then I also have set aside here three cups because I'm doing a double batch, but otherwise it would have been a cup and a half of the water for the noodles. So that I think goes in once we put all the noodles in. In fact, I can tell us the rest of the story. I was almost going to read the wrong recipe. So once that's in there, if the noodles are stuck, transfer them to a bowl, add a half a cup of the reserved water. Uh, gently toss with the water to untangle the noodles. Add the noodles, the spinach, and a cup of the pasta water to the pan with the vegetables. Toss to coat with the sauce in the pan. Sprinkle with sesame seeds and red pepper flakes. And you can serve these noodles warm, room temperature, or chilled. So basically you can make it, and however it comes out to the people is great. Unless, of course, you personally have a preference and you want to do it some particular way for yourself. So let me just come on over and check on these veggies here. They're cooking up really nice. So beautiful. Give you a little shot of them as well. It smells good. These Asian dishes are so good for that. Um, I did not do any additional chopping to my mushrooms. Could end up being a mistake. We have a couple of kids who don't love mushrooms that much. But we'll take the risk for now. Uh, I mentioned that my roasted red peppers were jarred. That's a little bit faster for me at this season in life. Another way that you can do it is to roast them yourself. So if you are lucky enough to have a gas stove, you can set them right on top of the fire and use tongs to turn around when they're cool. They just slip the, so they get a black blistery look to them and then you can just slip off the peels once they're uh, warm. Or you could, for instance, leave them whole or cut them in half and stick them on a roasting pan in the oven until they start to char and get slippery. Uh, I just don't have time right now, so I don't. But you absolutely could. It's fun for some people to be able to make their own stuff. And the jar is probably more expensive. Maybe not, though. It depends on whether or not you get your peppers on sale or if they came from your garden or just how you came about getting those peppers. So, I'm sure we're really close here. The zucchini and eggplants do not take a lot of time. So it's not this, like... Well, I put my stuff in and I got distracted. I went and did something else. You really don't want to walk too far away from your stuff. Um, but since I know that those noodles are going to go fast, I'm going to add my spinach ahead of time. Give it a chance to wilt down so that once I'm working with my noodles, I can work with them exclusively. The recipe calls for 12 ounces of spinach. So that means 24 ounces for me. This works out to be... 22 ounces. I'm going to call that good. <laughs> and it's going to cook way down and some fresh greens in your diet is really good for you. When I'm done with these, I actually cut them up further because they don't, otherwise they take up so much room in the recycling. So not my husband's favorite thing to do. Like, And now for our next cleaning up task, <laughs> we'll cut this. Uh, and actually, that's a benefit. If you buy the fresh, you can use those mesh reusable bags that I've been showing you. Actually, I can show you one again. And then you wouldn't have to have the extra plastic in the world, these single-use plastics. So this is a reusable bag. You could stick your fresh spinach in there, 
close it up and take it home. Um, I have stored a number of things just in these bags, but if you needed extra protection, just a regular kitchen towel uh, wrapped around something like your lettuce and stuck right in the fridge is fine so that you don't have to be utilizing a bunch of paper towel. And you could even get thinner, they call them tea towels, so you could get thinner towels yet. But who knew all these little things? For those of us who grew up in a world where everything was about plastic bags, we kind of lost that tradition of using what you have around the home and making sure that you would have little things like that around the home. So while wow, we're talking about that kind of a thing, let's see if our spinach can be manipulated here. It's a lot of spinach at first, which always feels so overwhelming initially. Like, what am I gonna do with this big pot of greens? No one in my family is gonna wanna eat it. But once it cooks down, it cooks down to almost nothing. You can't see it anymore. A whole lot of spinach does not go a long way. <laughs> but it's so good for you. And in a dish like this, I find that most of my kids, that there's enough else going on that they're not gonna get distracted by the spinach. So also a huge positive. Um, yesterday when I made the kale fried rice, if you have a family even though I made it really small, that just isn't going to tolerate the kale. You could sub it out for spinach. So sometimes I have recipes, for instance, that might roast zucchini in kale. And after trying it once, I might say to myself, you know, I'm going to actually sub that out for the, um, for the spinach because it's just a little bit easier for the kiddos sometimes to stomach, to palate. But if you've got ones with texture, uh, you want to make sure that they're not getting a big clump of it because they may not chew and swallow and they may choke easily. So, all good things to keep in mind. If you really can't get the greens in there, uh, smoothies seem to do the trick. <laughs> Throw some fruit and some greens in a smoothie and boom bada bang, they too can drink their greens. And you can drink your greens is the amazing part. Great, so see how this is already starting to cook down and be a part of the whole experience in there. <laughs> Which is gonna lead us to be ready. Those other vegetables are definitely tender now. You can see they're just a lot more translucent than they were, right? I can't just hold them in my hands anymore. Plus they're hot, so holding them in my hands isn't that great of an idea. Same with my zucchini. I'm not gonna want it to get much more cooked than that because it would just fall apart. Which means I can turn my heat off for one. And while you're staring at that beautiful pot, I'm gonna give my noodles a little bit more water. I'm gonna come in and just toss them in. And then move these around as well. And that honestly is the whole meal. So I had done a little bit of prep work before coming on just so that you didn't have to wait for water to boil and that basic onion garlic mixture to saute. So we kind of caught it in the middle. But look how beautiful. You can serve this with some sesame seeds and again, if you wanted, the red pepper flakes. So I have friends that can handle spice. If you can't handle spice, totally skip it. But I may even pause on adding the extra water. I don't think I need it. But let me show you this beautiful, beautiful, so many veggies, so much really nice color. And again, you're done. You don't have to do anything to make this a, a better meal. It's all set and the flavor is going to be fantastic. So that is the soba noodle with all these amazing vegetables. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.